buttons. What would our applications be without them? They come in different variations, with icons on both sides, with icons on the left or on the right, with text alone, with icons alone, with an entirely different color or size. So in this video, I will show you how you could create a reusable button component in Figma so it's easy to switch between variants in your designs. So let's get started. Okay, so to kick things off, I like to start creating the button with as much items I want the button to have. So that would be the text and two icons by the right and left. All right. So this is the maximum number of items I want my button to have at any point in time. So I'll make a selection of these items and create an auto layout for them. I will just name this auto layout button. Okay, so let's add some styles to this. Okay, so to make this look more like a button, I'll add some horizontal padding and vertical padding. Just use six and uh, let's curve this a bit. So here we have our base button. And then I'll go ahead and make this a component. With Figma, what I could do quickly is to add properties that determine the visibility of this item. So what that means is that, okay, what if I don't want to have a button on the, sorry, an icon on the right, I should be able to switch this off. Or if I don't have a text, I can be able to switch this off. Or just if I just want to have uh, the icon on the left and the text, I can be able to switch it off. So we can quickly add those kind of properties by selecting the item, making sure that it's selected here from the layers panel. And then when you go to the properties side of things, you're going to see in the layer visibility, there is this new icon here that you can use to create a Boolean property. So the name of the Boolean property is show vector, but I'm going to change it to icon show, oops, show icon right. And I'll click on create property. Now, before I do the same thing for the text and this other button, I can just go ahead and rename this layers. So select the text, repeat the same step, click on this button here to create the Boolean property. I click on create property. And what you notice is that it takes from the name of the layer to form a name for you. So I'm okay with this name. I'll click on create property, select the icon left, click on the same button, create property, show icon left. It's okay by me. Now, if I make a copy of this button, let's say I'm using this instance somewhere else in my project you notice i already have those uh, properties i can toggle so i can say i don't want text i don't want this icon then it leaves me with just an icon or i can say i want a text with an icon on the left or i want a text with an icon on the right so with just those three things we already have some kind of reusable dynamic button but that's not all we want to be able to add more properties to this particular button so we're going to go ahead and start creating variants of this button so we'll do that by going to the properties panel go down to where we have properties here click on this plus icon and choose variant and then we have a new property here that says property one i'm going to change this we want to add let's add a state so the state is going to be whether it's the default state hover focus or disabled so i'm going to leave this at default so let's add another variant of this so go down to this button here that says add variant click on it now we have the second variant now this second variant all i want to change here will be the state value so the state value here is going to be hover so this will be default state hover state so in this hover let's make some adjustments so we can just darken the color a bit all right so we can go ahead and create another variant now i can do that by clicking on this plus here or i make a selection of the components by clicking this button here and then clicking this button here that also adds a variant so this one is going to be for when it's in focus and uh, for that uh, let us just add a stroke around it i'll just make the stroke the uh, let's make it a darker color 
can increase the stroke if I want to. And then we're going to create the last state variant of this, which is going to be when it's disabled. Then we can go ahead and change the colors. So we have four variants and let's make a copy of this and see how that works. So with a copy of the button, let's just assume this is somewhere in our component. You can see we can easily change the state for when it's hover state, focus state, and as well switch off the, the other visibilities if we want to. So all of that is baked into this button. So let's create another property, variant property. So make selection of the component. And then I'm going to go to properties, click here and choose variants. Now the property we're going to add next is the size and the value for this one is going to be based. So when we click on create property, it's going to apply the same value for all of this. So it's going to assume that all the size of this is the base size. So if at all you wanted to like have something different then you have to step into the component itself and make a change to that value but i'm okay with all of this being of the base size so i want to create for when the button size is small select all the variants i have and make a copy of all the variants now i'll do that by selecting everything hold down alt key and uh, drag but if i do this this way it's going to come off the the component itself they're going to be copies so i don't want it to be that way what i need to do is increase this boundary so that when i make a copy of this and drag it to the right it will still be inside this boundary so it's seen as part of the the button component all right for these new ones i want the states so i can just go ahead and change it here i want the states to be small hit enter now of course they don't look small automatically so i need to change uh let's change the the text size is what i need to change so let me step in here make a selection of all the text here i can make the text size 10. i'll make a selection of all the icons too all right so i can just change the size of this to 12. so this looks more in comparison with the other one so let's see how that works in uh, let's say we're using a component so i'll just make a copy of this outside this boundary then you can see i can switch the size from base to small and i can as well switch off or play around with the other uh, values what else can we do uh, we can of course make the large size but just to make this video shorter than it should be i won't go ahead and do that let me just make this very large okay so we could add variants for the color all right so we could say these are the primary buttons and the next ones are going to be the secondary buttons however i like to leave that till the end when i'm sure i'm done with other variants uh so that I can apply that overall property to all the buttons at once. So let me just keep to the next thing I want to do. I want to add buttons that I have buttons that the corners are fully rounded. So um, I have to make a selection of all the buttons I've done so far and I'll make a copy of, if I make a copy of the, let me add the variant itself. So selection of the button here, I'll click on the properties add variant i'll call this uh let me call this circular now i want this variant to be like a switch like a yes or no so the value we're going to put here is i just want circular i'll say no so all these are not circular now when i make a copy of all of this let me just drag it to the right here still need to expand this a bit all right so make a selection of this and i'll say yes all the the circular here should be yes of course no changes yet so what i'll do is i'll increase the border radius of all of this so let's just make it 30. now let's see how this works if we're using this button somewhere so when i drag this out you can see that circular uh, property is like a switch now so i can switch it on and off on and off and i can well have it when it's just a text and icon what of icon alone let's see 
yeah it becomes a very round button which is nice we can also change the states so this is a disabled one this is the one in focus and all that all right so before i go further i kind of skipped mentioning that you can also add prototypes to your component so for example i want this base button now when you hover over it it should change this one so we can change the flow while hovering it should change its state to the hover state let's go back to our design okay there's another property i would like to have that is when the button has a background or not uh we can do that by making a copy uh, before I make a copy let's go to the button select the button component let's add a property variant i'll call it background all right for background the value of this they have a background yes so i'll say yes create property i'll make a copy of all of this uh, let's bring it down here and for all of these new ones i'll change the background to no but if we leave it this way we've not actually done make the changes so what i want to do here is actually remove those backgrounds all right so for this ones i need to actually step in here and change and change all of this to something like this so i'm just basically going in changing the colors to fit uh what i want so hope i would be a little bit darker uh let's say for the focus let's leave the stroke for the focus so let's see how that works so i'll make a copy of this i can switch off the you can see i can switch up the background let's see do we have it in uh okay this circular let's see what it looks like in hover state is a little bit darker focus state that uh stroke is back disable state we can also change the size now when i'm satisfied with every other property that i want to add i can now go ahead and do the ones for theme color if you wish to call it that way so I'll click on the button let's add um variant call it color and for this one the value is going to be primary so the value of this will be primary so that means i'm going to have another one which is going to be secondary so i'll make a selection of all of it i'll make a copy and then for the color here all of them selected i'll change this to secondary and then i need to go in step in here and make changes to colors but what i could do with figma is uh make a selection of all of this i could target the colors here and change them all at once so this is assuming uh you already have like a color scheme set up somewhere then you can just pretty much know the exact colors you want to use all right so let's see how this works so i'll make a copy of this button let's say we're using it somewhere i can change the color from primary from secondary to primary you notice that changes to and every other variance remains accompanied with it so you can see how that works make another copy of this and for this one the value of the color is going to be alternate alternate oh, yeah then we go ahead in here change all the colors and of course when you're doing when you're choosing your colors you need to make sure that uh, they pass the accessibility checks so what that means is that the foreground and the background doesn't complement each other there should be enough contrast so that the users can see what that is so this button i can switch to alternate let me change this to focus so you can see the colors change and we still retain all these properties so that's how you can easily create a component for your button reusable component where you can easily switch the properties all right so before we wrap up this video there's one more thing i would like to show you uh that is how you could make these icons to be uh dynamic so in this button we have we can only switch off the icons uh we can decide what icon so what you could do is before you get started with creating this button component you create um, a list of all the icons you're going to use so let me just paste some icons here 
So these are just various icons and you can go ahead and give them names. You just name them appropriately. I'm going to make each individual one a component. So I'll make a selection of all of it. I will click this button here and choose create multiple components so that each of them is a component and then I'm going to group them so I can group them in an auto layout or just a frame. So let me use uh, let's use a frame. So make a frame selection and this frame selection I'll call this I'm just call it icons. When I'm creating this button or let's say I'm creating this button, I will just make a copy of one of these icons. All right and uh, okay let's go into this button here this base one so let's say i'm just starting and then it's going to be part of what is going to be in my button so i'm going to call it let me call it i don't know let me just call it icon right and uh, just get rid of the other one this is in my component this button component now let's say i'm using this button somewhere in my design you would notice that if i go into if i step into this icon let's say i make a selection of this icon i can go to this design panel here and change the icon so i'm able to pick from the list of these icons i already have here let me do the layer visibility of this one create property now it says show icon right let me just make it all right so i'll still be able to switch it off and on all right so it's something to have in mind when you're about to start creating your uh button component with icons so it's good to have uh, a list of your icon or your icons as components which you can now use in creating your button component so that's easy to swap those uh, icons when you need them. So if you found this video helpful in any way, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section. And I'll see you all in the next video.